Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Veronica Maturino, Chief Executive Officer of Onabin, who has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Veronica, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We appreciate the opportunity to talk about the work that we do and the people that we serve. So let's talk about the people that you serve first, and then let's talk about how you serve. Sure. Who do you serve? Onabin was established in 1991 um, in Portland, Oregon, and it was uh, established to meet the entrepreneurial development needs of four Oregon-based tribes. And it was through the insight um, and creation of a curriculum called Indianpreneurship, which is a culturally specific business planning material that Onabin then went statewide, then regional, and then through sales and distribution, we became a nationwide organization. So there were four tribes in that Portland area. Mm -hmm. They came together, they identified a need to create a kind of a self-help and, and self-enrichment uh, facility in your organization to help those tribes, members of those tribes, uh, thrive in, in, in their business endeavors. Yes, really to create a private sector. Right. Uh, because at that point, the opportunities in regards to employment were really based around the tribe itself. And culturally uh, relevant and cu culturally sensitive was so important because uh, so often you had that sort of distinction between people who were in the tribes and people outside of the tribes and organizations outside of the tribes. And basically by creating an organization where those sensitivities were there, you actually allowed people to share in ways that were productive for all tribes and all members of those tribes. Yes, so our curriculum is based on the art of storytelling. So we begin every chapter with a story of another individual that we've truly worked with through the years. Um, we, we change names often. And we've found that through storytelling, other people are motivated. When you see other individuals who come from the same kinds of traditions, the same kinds of backgrounds, maybe even the same kinds of limitations in regard to geographic dislocation, um, it inspires you to, or motivates you to take that step or to take that leap into entrepreneurship. What's so interesting about this idea of stories is the cultural connection because there is such a rich heritage of storytelling amongst the different tribes and those stories take different forms. Mm -hmm. And you're using this heritage that is so culturally consistent across the various tribes and is so sophisticated to inform now your programs and transmit knowledge that then has an economic value as people are developing their businesses. It's, it's very exciting and we were, um, we're definitely pioneers in the field. Uh, our curriculum is the chosen curriculum by the SBA in DC and so we, we actually sell our curriculum to tribal organizations and other nonprofits across the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska. What I love about the work that we do and the opportunities that it presents to myself and our team is we get to be a part of other people's dreams. Mm -hmm. And so the successes that we celebrate as an organization are sweeter because they're not just ours. It's just the, the positive imprints that we've left on these individuals and these communities um, throughout the, the places that, that we have the benefit of working. So in recent months, our board has taken kind of a different direction and it's a direction that we have considered moving for probably the last two or three years. Um, but in the summer, our board voted to expand our audience to include not just Native America, but all peoples of color. So what you're trying to do is to create strength out of strength more strength out of more strength, as opposed to going outside always for solutions. You're actually coming into the community yes. where the community itself is sharing knowledge in a systematic way and then mentoring itself and creating its own strength. In a sense, you're also strengthening the storyteller in their story, in their narrative, in their ability to share. And so what you're, what you're actually doing is cultivating an ecosystem of self-support and, and self-help. Absolutely. Like our end goal is to create higher levels of self-sufficiency in all of the communities that we've worked in. And so I can say with pride that throughout my entire time with Onabin that we have never 
shut our doors or we've never excluded an individual who was a part of the, the community that we work in because we feel very strongly that regardless of your race, your color or your gender, um, your sex, if you're within a community, you have the capacity to change the economic stability of that community through whether it's through job creation or even on the job training or workforce development for youth. So it's really an exciting time for our organization. We've, we, we started with one, with one product. We've created spinoff products when we realized that businesses who, who got beyond the aspiring entrepreneur and the startup point, you know, they, they needed something to take them from point A to point B. And so we created another curriculum called Growing. We then created another m material called the Marketing Mix, which in the world that we live in now, marketing is such an important part of the, probably the biggest piece of growing a business. And of course, we're entrepreneurial too. So all of these products that we've created, um, they've been a way that we could create an earned income as an organization, which in the nonprofit world is so important because when we love our grant dollars, but the grant dollars are always tied to very specific projects and our earned income is a way that we can create and, and pilot new products and services so that we're, we're meeting the needs of all of the audiences that we want to, to work with. Now you talked about the fact that you also have programs for women and youth, and I'm, I'm looking here, you have the Real Change Youth Empowerment Initiative, you have Girl Talk, Women and Girls Empowerment Program. Talk a little bit about those two programs. So Girl Talk is our Women and Girls Empowerment Initiative, and it is designed uh, as a platform for women and girls to build one another up. We host monthly meetings, we connect these women and girls to other resources in the community, we create volunteer days to get them involved within the community so that we are constantly giving back to the community. Um, and, and we provide obviously that platform for entrepreneurial development to occur. This past, probably in the last nine months, uh, our youngest members of Girl Talk were able to provide $10,000 in scholarships to other girls and, and the activities that they're involved in through their own entrepreneurial development endeavors. You also um, are helping people in your, in your financial literacy deal with very routine aspects, things like a loan application. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about that and also your contractual services. With Real Change, it really is geared toward those, those yet, that younger generation. We do train the trainers on how mm -hmm. to use our curriculum with, the, with adult um, professionals or leaders within the community. But you're absolutely correct. When those older youth start getting to a point where they know that potentially these minor trust dollars are coming their way, right. they're already thinking about what kind of fancy car they want to buy. And so when we go in and, and we create some of our activities around them, we actually almost make it kind of a game. So we, we can make it very elaborate where they're going from table to table and they're purchasing insurance and they're buying pretend cars or we can do it kind of in a card game where we know ahead of time how much money their check is going to be. Um, they're provided the check, they have to endorse it because so many of them don't even know how to endorse the check. And then we give them paper money and then they decide what it is that they're going to buy. Are you gonna live with your parents? Are you gonna get an apartment? And so decision by decision, they're losing the dollars that those items or those luxuries cost, even right down to a meal plan. And so after that activity, we often go back in and we teach them and we always invite partners in the community. We think it's important that they engage with um, a banker so that they can start creating that trust with uh, a lending institution or a financial institution. So we do go over things like how to fill out a loan application, how to shop for insurance and how not to buy a brand new sports car because you're 18 years old and the insurance alone is going to eat you alive by the time that your money is, is gone. Um, and, and then what are you going to do? How are you going to afford all of these things How that you purchased? How are you going to make the payments if yes. your payments are all going into insurance? Once, once a young person gets into the economy, the rules change. As soon as you get out there, everybody else there is going to be trying to take the money that you have in your pocket and put it into theirs. Mm -hmm. What you're trying to do is to anticipate Make sure that, that young people understand these rules 
before they, they end up becoming the victim of their own ignorance. Mm -hmm. And not even just, it, and, and so for some of these youth, it's not even just outsiders. Sometimes it's even within their own family oh, that, of course. that these monies are waiting on. Um, and, and we just want to arm them with the information and the opportunity to make better life and choices. And it doesn't have to be nefarious. I mean, if, if you're not pre-planning, then there could be no ill will whatsoever, but you still step into that hole. Well, the frustrating thing in, in a few of these communities is there may not even be a bank in the community. And so right. when these young people are getting these checks, sometimes it's the casino where they're cashing the checks, and then the dollars that they receive end up in a shoebox in their closet. So when you have money that's just easily accessible, anything could happen. You know. Right. So one of the things that we do also in these communi communities is advocate um, you know, for the existence of, a, of some sort of a banking institution, even if it's a mobile bank that comes, you know, routinely once or twice a month or every quarter when the, when the checks are coming out. Our goal is to keep those young people there, but to make sure that they have everything that they need to thrive as adults and the community, the community can, can grow. Do you ever encounter resistance to, to, to how you're operating? So Onabin has been around for almost 30 years and we've had such a presence in native communities over time that we're truly a friend in the communities that we work with. It's, and so we don't, we don't get a lot of resistance. If, if we ever encounter resistance, it's really with the older generation who are maybe struggling with the changes that are occurring, you know, not just within the world, but within their communities individually. So in, in essence, what, what we do becomes their own. And so the value exists there. So on the other hand, do you build trust to uh, groups and entities, banks and so on and so forth that are outside of the community? Mm -hmm. And you use your trust that you've acquired over the last 30 years to build trust in those institutions? Yes, so oftentimes we will, when we're enlisting the help of new partners, it's, there's a conversation around in whatever community we're, we're trying to enlist them to work with us in. And then there are oftentimes some conversations that occur with our local partners. Hey, we're bringing in this bank and she's gonna do this for you. Uh, and, and so once, once they realize that we're bringing in another friend, then, then the resistance kind of goes away. But you do kind of have to prove yourself into these communities. They, they wanna know that you're there um, to help and not to harm. And having served for 30 years, you've, you've spent 30 years proving yourself and you prove yourself every day as you deliver your services. Veronica Matarino, thank you so much for sharing the work of Onaban and thank you so much for your insights. You're welcome, thanks for having me.